I've just been speaking to Andrew Robb, the Shadow Finance Minister. Without a strong and saved economy, nothing else is possible. With, and it's not the time to be adding impediments to that economy. Now, this is an issue we're going to have to address seriously in the next couple of days, a carbon tax. Rodney Hyde is a New Zealand MP. He's the current leader of the ACT Party, ACT Party, the Association of Consumers and Taxpayers in New Zealand. Now, these people, consumers and taxpayers, were so fed up that they only formed themselves in 1993, and now they've got four MPs in the New Zealand Parliament, consumers and taxpayers, fed up with government and fed up with being lied to. Now, Rodney Hyde is the Minister for Local Government and Regulatory Reform. He's the Associate Minister for Commerce. They have an emissions trading legislation brought in by the Labor government. He made a speech to the New Zealand Parliament, this man, Hyde, way back in September 2008, arguing against the global warming hypothesis, which he called a hoax. He said the data in the hypothesis don't hold together. He called Al Gore a phony and a fraud. And he warned that an emissions trading legislation, a carbon tax, call it what you will, would add, he said this in 2008, would cost New Zealanders dear. And that's the point of it. He said then it will drive up the cost of basic goods and services for New Zealanders, probably, he said, by at least $500 or $600 a year. He said then it would put businesses in New Zealand out of business, farmers off their farms, now, this is the bloke whose party represents consumers and taxpayers. This is a speech way back, quite prescient, in September 2008, he said, and it will do all of this for no impact on world weather, for no environmental gain, and for no conceivable advantage to New Zealand or the world. And he went on in great detail about this global warming, saying the science was rubbish because a computer model is not science. He said science is about theories, hypotheses, and the testing of these against the facts. And he said, this is not what's happened. Now, this man has a science degree from the University of Canterbury. He's travelled overseas. He's worked on oil rigs in the North Sea. He's been to Romania, Egypt, India, Bangladesh, Malaysia. Rodney Hyde can now see where all his prophecies stand. He's in government and he's on the line. Rodney Hyde, MP, good morning. Good morning, Alan, and good morning to your listeners. Thank you for your time. Well, you've got a carbon tax, an emissions trading scheme. You warned the government about this way back in September 2008. Where are we now? Uh, we've got it. Uh, what happened in 2008 was um, the Labor government passed the legislation. New Zealanders, uh, particularly the middle voters then, felt that there was a need to do something um, for the environment. And so our coalition uh, party, the National Party, the, if you like, the Conservative Party of New Zealand, uh, they supported uh, keeping the emissions trading scheme, but said that they would reduce its costs uh, they came into office uh, with us in 2008. We formed a coalition, and um, they have stuck to that. We have fought them vociferously and um, on it, and they have sort of reduced the costs of the emissions trading scheme. But nonetheless, uh, there was an immediate it. It, there was immediate rise in electricity prices. Yes. Yeah. And yes, everything that flows from that, everything that flows yes. from that. Yes, and fuels up, and um, farmers are really angry. Um, the elderly are angry, and we've done just uh, during a series of meetings around rural and provincial New Zealand, and they are really hurting because of the economic conditions, and they can't understand a government that isn't listening, and they feel a very, very deep betrayal because here's a government, when they are on their knees because of economic conditions, piling up costs onto them mm. for a reason that they can't see. Absolutely. And in New Zealand, what's happening is the money that's being gathered um, through the emissions trading tax is then going across um, about $1.5 billion over four years, is going across to the forest owners. And so they say thank you very much because they receive that money because the theory and the argument is, is that they suck up all our bad carbon. And that typically is uh, a multinational company uh, that bought the trees, didn't even plant them, and it's just a windfall gain to the forest yeah, owners. It. And Rod little old ladies and farmers are very pissed off about uh, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Now, Roger Kerr, the Executive Director of the New Zealand Business Roundtable, has called for the suspension of the ETS. The Farmers Federation said every time we fill up the tank since July 1, when it, that's this year, we've already paid extra costs because of the imposition. Ralph Chapman, the Director of Environmental Studies at Victoria University, says the ETS won't even decrease New Zealand's carbon emissions. So New Zealand businesses and consumers are being hit with extra costs with no benefit. 
Correct. Well, I want you to say something to hundreds of thousands of people across Australia who are listening to me, because they've got to go to the polls in on, on the 21st of August, and the government of this country, Julia Gillard, is talking about a carbon tax. Tony Abbott is saying there will be no carbon tax. What are you saying to people who are listening to you? Well, I'm not going to comment on how you should vote, and uh, but what I can t- report to you is this, is that while New Zealanders uh, two years ago were happy to go along with an ETS, increasing numbers of them now, when the cost hits home, they are very, very angry with the government, and they're very angry that they have to pay this ETS. And that's where it, the rubber hits the road. When little old ladies, uh, when they're paying their power bill, have to pay for it, and in New Zealand, it's been a loser. Uh, loser. You said way back in September 2008 about the modelling, we always get this word modelling, that proved that the globe was warming and carbon dioxide emissions were the problem and human beings are the enemy of the world surviving. You said, and it was a beautiful image, quote, this is Rodney Hyde, the MP, said in 2008, we could take the Wellington Telephone Directory, Wellington, New Zealand, feed it into the model that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change used in 2001, and we'd get the hockey stick that saw the world running scared, that saw policymakers running scared, and saw Al Gore make his movie based on it. The science was rubbish, because the computer model is not science. Science is about theories, hypotheses, and the testing of these against the facts. So on the basis, Rodney Hyde, of all of this, You've now got a carbon tax in New Zealand. We've escaped it by a whisker, but there's a carbon tax in prospect here. If we want it, I guess we've got to learn the New Zealand experience and say, expect the prices to go up. Well, the whole point of the carbon tax is to drive up prices because the purpose behind it is to hurt us so that we don't hop in the car so much, that we don't actually farm as hard, uh, that we don't turn on uh, the power and the heaters so much, and that we actually cut back on industrial production. That's its point. And um, this idea that politicians have parlayed in New Zealand, oh, well, it's not going to impact you very much. Well, actually, what they've done is they've set up the apparatus for the emissions trading scheme. They've bought in the tax at a low level. But if it's actually to achieve its purpose, the, pr- the cost of that tax has to go very, very high because actually they're trying to get us to burn less fossil fuels and use less power, and that means hurting businesses, hurting families, and hurting every householder in your country. Amazing stuff. I'll let you go. I can't let you go without making one comment. I think you've got... I know you're being swept up with all of this euphoria about your rugby team. It's a pretty ordinary side, Rodney, really. Come on. <laughs> well, we're very proud because, you know, you know we've been through some long years, and uh, we're very, very excited, and... Um, but, you know, what a, what a magnificent game yeah. and um, what a magnificent competition that we have in rugby. Yeah, it is. And, it is. Um, you know, I, I just love the rivalry. I love the competition. How are you going to manage? Big... I mean, you're a member of Parliament now. How are you going to manage? You've got a World Cup there. Are you worried about accommodation? No. Um, we figure, we, we, you know, I'm not a worrier, though, Alan. Um, you know, I don't worry about too many things. What we're doing is we're doing our best. Uh, what we're pleased about is the whole country's getting behind this, um, and we're very, you know, we're we're rugby passionate and rugby mad, and we want to show the rest of the world um, well, it's, New Zealand its best. It's a good story if they were in Australia and they were doing well. The government would want to take them over. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, fortunately, we dumped the sort of government that would have done that. That's right. <laughs> well done. I do appreciate your time, Rodney, very much. You keep it up, and yeah, uh, you watch you. us take that World Cup, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk again about that and other matters, Rodney. Good to talk Thank to you. you. Rodney Hyde, a New Zealand MP. Is that chilling or is it not?